Just let me know when. Hi everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and today I'm so excited to be bringing to you The Glass Slipper, which is a really fun painting all about one of our favorite fairy tales, Cinderella. I'm going to be showing you every step that you need to complete this painting at home. If you check the description below, you're going to see a link to our website, and there you will find you can get a PDF printout of the reference that I created and also of the traceable if drawing is not your favorite friend. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hi guys. He's going to be tracking you and well, tracking you, stalking you. He's going to be reading your comments while tracking me with our cameras so that you can get right in on how I'm constructing this piece. Cause again, it's about you being able to paint this at home. I am really excited to be here today cause it's been a minute. And I've had a lot of challenges getting back online. So to that end, I think I'm going to just jump on into it and get the painting going because I feel like I really need to. Mm -hmm. The materials today, we have an 11 by 14 canvas board. I have wishes on it. <clears throat> I have a wish that Laura wishes for her little brush's fever to come down and for her to feel a lot better. Um, Kimberly is sending out some wishes about having a great new job and a great transition that goes quickly and easily and just leads her into her best self. Um, Shelly is really wishing for some healing around lungs. Alexis is just wishing for some general upbeat healing energy. Um, Kelly is, uh, looking for a good closing and Kat is strength for losses that are going on around her so she can get back to painting. And I really hope that she gets that. And, G uh, Jeannie is great news also about an upcoming job. Just like some improvement on that. So that's our wishes. Let's look at our paint. Today's palette is kind of fun. Um, I have titanium white phthalo blue. This is optional. You can optionally use some zinc white or mixing white for this to get a translucent kind of magical look if you want to. But if you don't have it, you can just use the glaze. I have Mars black, phthalo green, cad yellow medium, quinacridone magenta, alizarin crimson, burnt sienna, yellow ochre. And right here, my fave, the acrylic glazing liquid. Uh, right now I have satin and that's just because I didn't grab the gloss though. Preferentially, weirdly, I do prefer gloss. Just, but that's a very subjective preference. It's not based on performance <laughs> or hmm. anything. I'm ready to start putting in the background and then getting to say hi to everybody while we're doing that. So I'm going to sketch this in with you guys. I mean, and then when we start blocking that in, we'll get to say hi and see how you guys are doing. But right now I'm going to take a number eight's cat's tongue. You could use a round or bright, but we're going to just kind of block in some general space. Let's take our blue. I'm going to load just my blue on here. And I'm even going to get a little glaze in it because it doesn't need to be that opaque. And we're going to sketch out a couple little spaces so that we can block this in. So up here in the corner, we're going to sketch out <coughs> a little bit of this bush shape and we just want to retain some of this so that it stays this bright sort of cherry blossom space so i'm making this can you see how i'm going wiggly 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 down and then i come back i'm just making a very uneven little rustic shape this is in your traceable if you're really unfamiliar with that and that can make it a lot easier to do and then down here I'm going to just say that this lower third, right, mm -hmm. that we have here, below that's going to be grass. And this is going to let me do this very dark sky and have this sort of bright focal area of grass and then get the glass effect in the flowers. And then the glowing butterflies will be a fun trick. <sighs> so the first thing I'm going to paint in while we're talking is I'm going to take a little bit of my blue and I'm going to add a smidge of my alizarin to it right here. Can you see how I'm doing? Oh, yeah. And I'm going to come here and start painting in this deep, dark night between here and here. And as I'm going up, I'm going to be adding a bit of darker color, even black, to make my night deep. Scrubbling out my little watercolor words here. All right. 
So that, that ombre, is that that's what you're going to be creating? There? I'm going to be creating an ombre. This is going to be the lightest part of my ombre, and it's going to get darkest as I go up. And I'm going to do that by adding a little bit of um, black into it at about this point, and that's going to darken it up a lot. And I added the alizarin just to deepen this down here. All right, see I'm smoothing that, making yeah. that nice and smooth. And as I'm going to come up, I'm going to start doing the little smidges, smooches, bits of black. So you get a little water. And I'm going to keep adding this as I go up, and I'm going to blend these together. See that nice little blend there? Oh, yeah. So where these two areas are wet, you can blend them. And that'll create a nice little effect. That way we get a nice dark sky, but we're not... So dark, we can't enjoy our painting. Okay, how is everybody, Mr. Cooney? Let's say mm -hmm. hi while we're painting in our ombre. So this is really great. Everyone's really excited. I was just looking over. We got a huge crowd of people here together, and they're really they're really excited about the, these this series of fantasy lessons. <laughs> so uh, the, the, you know, this has been uh, one of the one. Cynthia was just saying, oh, she's very excited to come and see this one. It's her first time here with us. Hi, welcome, Cynthia. Hi, so, Cynthia. And uh, yes, I'm welcome. just adding black each time I go up to keep darkening, and I'll scumble into here. Now, are you going to go to complete black, or will it just be mostly blue? Or I'm going to keep it where there's some noticeable blue. I think for this painting, that will actually give us a better result. You know, I don't want to be a slave to the reference I created. I just, you know, wanted yeah. to have a sense of what it was, and then... I'll make adjustments that let it be a lovely painting, too. Now, Mary was asking, she was like, so, Mary. so blending is definitely a, sp a component. Speed is a component to blending here? Well, so, it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so what it is is that acrylic paint blends um, wet into wet, right? Where two edges are wet and you can smooth them together. You can slow the drying time down of your paint with a medium that modifies that. Um, sometimes they're called retarders. Mm -hmm. um, on this particular one, I have a glaze and retarder in one product, and it lets me do a lot from one bottle. Mm. So I like to use it. You could use both a glaze and a retarder if you didn't want to use that product. And that would be okay. Because <laughs> I'm j I just use it. <laughs> But I won't be like upset if you're like, no, I'm all about the Grumbacher. I'll be like, okay, that's cool. I understand. And you can kind of see how I've got my little ombre going here. And I am liking that. Yeah. And it got quite dark. But it's looking really nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's going to be nice, actually, with the glass slipper a little bit and, and these butterflies and everything. Now I'm going to come and I'm going to get a little bit of my... I barely rinsed out my brush. And I'm going to get a little of my burnt sienna in my green. And the reason is, is that this green can be a little bit transparent. And I want to add this deep, dark value, but I want it to be in the green. Oh, yeah, I see it now. Right? I don't know if our cameras are catching this. Look, I'm mm -hmm. tapping. I'm taking this on the edge of my brush. And I'm just tapping out this foliage, this playful fo foliage. And that, that green foliage, tap, 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 tap. it's almost the same value as the background. If it's we just, looked at it in, in a black and white value scale, yeah. We can't <clears throat> actually do that. You know that. I think every once in a while we should because it puts into perspective that like, you can use almost any color as long as you have values. Mm-hmm. Right, and we know that behind these flowers we have this deep value. I just want it to be this green. You want it to be green instead of the brown, the blue. Yes, I do. Which makes I sense. feel like it'll it'll look cooler in the end. Well, and, you know, the other thing you were talking about earlier with blending with acrylics, it's about both blending and layers. In layers, yeah. layers. <laughs> the thing is, acrylics can be almost any medium. It, it, they're, it's wild what they can do. And it's really all about how you modify them with mediums, uh, whether you're working wet into wet or over a dry area using a glaze or a dry brush. Hmm. In that 
that ability to go from a wash to a dry brush in one medium is incredible. This is an amazing product. I am tapping out little leaves to give this guy some, some feeling of some, you know, personality and texture. I'm not even going to get my brush uh, wet, really. Well, I might dip in here to improve flow. I'm going to dip into improve flow. I might get a little of my yellow ochre here. And I'm going to come right here in the center. <clears throat> now I'm going to kind of wiggle my brush at this little strange little horizon line that I've got. Just to make it a, a not flat level horizon line. Oh. I don't want it to be flat or level. I want to have just the softest weird little flirty edge. You know what we're doing? Yeah. The paint's transparent. I'm not putting down a lot. I'm just making little random scuffuffles and then I'm going to just come across and off lay and then on these outer edges I might go back into that brown and green again saying yeah and this layer will just let me build up when I'm trying to build up and it'll be super nice I don't want to put my butterflies in until I have all my flowers in because I really kind of, <sighs> I didn't want to layer the flowers over the butterflies. I wanted to kind of place them between the branches. So to that end, I'll put my flowers in and that way I can place butterflies where I feel like there's room. It's not like it would have been wrong to do it the other way. I was just right. feeling very opinionated <laughs> <laughs> about what I wanted and that happens. And this is like a piece I've been excited to do for a while. Now, th I had a, there was another interesting question that came okay. in here. So I'm brush. about to sippy sippy, so I'm so ready to answer a question. Oh, good. This is this I is one of those ones that scumble this darker color up a little bit. Well, yes. Yeah, so tell me about. Let's finish scumbling, and then I'll ask it. So you're okay. just keeping that an unevenness. Yes, just so it feels like sort of planting random. But it, again, it's such a dark value you can barely see it back there, right? Well, I, you know, it's actually th down below. It looks like a lighter value against, but on the blue, it looks like a very similar. Yeah, it, isn't that crazy? Yeah, and I think it's because that white makes it makes it pop more. Yes, but now we're starting to get that nice layer. And yeah. Now that I have that, I can let this dry for a second, and I can sip okay. my coffee and answer the question. All right. So, <clears throat> so little brush Donatello wants to know. Okay, Donatello. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's eight. <laughs> so pizza dude <laughs> sorry so <clears throat> he'd like to know um uh what does cinnamon like to paint when she's upset he likes blues and reds they make him feel better so he'd like to know what you like to paint to make you feel better um i generally really really put it on my canvas there's a lot of paintings that don't come out where if i'm having a really really rough time mm -hmm. i just take that to the canvas and I put my whole experience, how I see it, into that. And sometimes John will be walking by and he'll look over the painting. He's like, honey, are you okay today? Because <laughs> it'll, it'll show. And, and that's been something I've done a long time is like uh, really since high school is take what I was feeling inside and put it into my art. And kind of uh, a lot of it wouldn't even be appropriate to post in my own group. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to do that to like every once in a while sort of have a silent scream all over your canvas. I used to paint some really scary figures that used to, to <laughs> disturb John, like these like screaming figures going, ah, ah. but it does help. Like at the mm -hmm. end of it, it's very cathartic. And yeah, I tend to use colors and things that express what I'm going through. So and I that, think it's healing. I think it's happens, a good way. Yeah, I've, I've noticed that happens both positive, you know, with with the to the to the good emotions and yeah. the neg and, and the negative emotions. You get them both out there. I agree. I think that art gives you a way to explain or express things that sometimes words leave us a little flat for. Yeah. You know, and and sometimes those pieces are just for us. Mm -hmm. You know, and they get just over and become something else. But you just need to like you know say how you're feeling and. I think that that's a really okay, wonderful way to talk about complicated stuff going on inside. And again, some of it wouldn't be in my group. 
everybody, on Facebook, but I love it and support it as an activity. Everybody is agreeing with you. Art is this wonderful way of doing this. I have to draw my painting. You have to guys. draw the painting. Okay, I got to draw my painting, guys. Right, you you could draw yours too, or you could talk to John. It's totally up to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what I'll say is, oh my gosh, we've had such a big crowd here, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. It's really nice on this Saturday to look out here and have all you guys chatting and all the little brushes uh, who joined us today. Thank you. Um, I do hope to see your paintings shared up with us and put them up on our Facebook, on our website, theartsherpa.com. Um, speaking of, if you look in the description below, you'll find a link to that website where you'll... Uh, You'll find the traceable, the reference image, the materials list, uh, and a bunch of other supporting reference links that we try to put on those pages to help you with this project. Um, you can also you know, uh, share, you meet up your friends there on theartshop.com. We're always hanging out there when we can. So uh, let's see here. Oh, no, she's back. back. Right, right as I start to go, is back. Hmm, what am I going to say next? Did I? It's almost Just had like, an M and M moment there that I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> oh my face! <laughs> Ow! So it's like, uh, oh man, there's 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 some there's some good you know there. Gotta, there, gotta move the hot liquid to the other side. <laughs> <now>. Oops! <laughs> or drool at that side. Uh. <laughs> so you, that's right. You're still you're still a little on the mend. So uh, yeah, I will be for a little bit, and I guess there's follow up stuff. So we're it's, you know it's going to be this is what art is for. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna take this sharpen. This is kids chalk. Right. This is what I mean by kids chalk. You know, like chalk, like that you get for chalkboard. Mm -hmm. This happens to be colored because that's what was there, but and white would have worked as well. And I've sharpened it with a sharpener. See. Oh, yeah. So I can have a point. I'm going to sketch in my little heel real fast. Okay. And I'll show you how I draw that in. You guys have a traceable to have exactly the reference. But I'm going to just sketch in my heel. And the first thing I like to do when I sketch in my heel is sketch in a ball. And then I like to plant a flat line here that I know is going to have another ball. So it's a weird thing. I actually think about the foot. Now I'm going to arc a line up. See how I arc for the, for the um, arch of the foot? I'm going to bring oh, this line back and pull a heel down. If for some reason you guys like, like my heel significantly changes from the reference heel and you like my better, I can put another traceable up of this one. Oh, all right. Because I'm, I'm, I'm actually... Are you deviating from said plan? I don't, not too much, but you know, you never know because I have my whole like, this is how I draw a heel. That's, this is true. You you, you have some style. And to I'm your I'm really keeping look. this pump very low for like how I would like normally draw. It. <laughs> so yeah, I I've noticed that there's the pump that you draw versus the one that you're willing to wear. Well, th I used to wear the pump that well, I draw, true. but then it no, broke all it, the bones in my feet. And now we rub your feet <laughs> to make sure that they don't. Now I don't wear those silly shoes. <laughs> and you know, my mom read the Red Shoe Diaries to me a whole bunch of look. She liked to read to me all the really depressing fairy tales. Match Girl. Stuff that the original Little Mermaid. <laughs> right. Very appreciative of the Disney version when it came out. <laughs> my mom didn't like to dishonor Hans and Christian's original integrity. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> so you can kind of see where I made this little loop up here. It's going to be the reflection of that slipper and that glass. See, isn't that nice? Yeah. That's how I actually sketch in a heel. I can raise this quite a lot and even platform this out. If you think about the structure of the foot within the shoe, that's something that really helps me. Now I've got my little wonderful uh, plant here and I'm going to draw a little branch down, kind of think about my my branches that I'm going to want and where I think that they're going to be. I'm just sketching those in because it's so much easier to remove a chalk thought than it is to remove a, and I'll say, okay, do I still have room for my butterfly up here? We'll say I got this much room for my butterfly. And so then I might want to move that branch down a little bit, say, just to make sure. That there's room for each of my little fluttery flies as they go by. And I'm just using a clean brush with some water to remove any chalk lines that I'm not into. 
Hmm. My paint is really good at binding, though. One of the reasons I use this brand. Um, so mm, there's no way mine will lift up from this. It just isn't going to. I can I can actually really mess up, and it's still going to stay attached. Which is one of the reasons why it's my brand. All right. So now that we have that little bit sketched in, we can do some fun stuff here. I'm going to use a slightly smaller cat's tongue. I'm going to use my number four. You could use a number four round. And I'm going to load a little of my burnt sienna with a smidge of black to it because I don't want it to be that saturated bright color. All right. And I might get, like, on one edge of it, just a little bit of this ochre. And I'm going to come down here with this branch. And I'm lightening my stroke as it comes down. Can you see how it was, like, heaviest up here? Now, it's got that really interesting, like, like it's yellow on the top and black on the bottom. Yeah, so I'm loading one side of my brush with the burnt sienna, and then I'm coming and loading one edge with the yellow ochre, and that way I'm getting some of that. Can, can you show me the brush there? I'm going to look at that real quick. Yeah. Uh, so here's the burnt sienna and the black. Yeah. And then I've just given, like, one little spot some yellow ochre, so when I brush it down, it's sort of already there. Doesn't mean I won't go and you make another little anything it's just and that's how you get that complex yeah i'm just trying to get a little dimensionality on it and grab a little ochre because these are sort of like cherry blossoms so what's wonderful about these is they're supposed to be sort of really broken up little guys and that's a nice thing that i can do with my branches Make sure that they have that broken upness in their little stroke. You know, you can bring some little twiggles out if you feel like you need to for design. It's always nice. I'm going to rinse out. And that just gives me something to put my um, branches on. If you're not, if you're having trouble at all seeing your branches, you can come back with a little bit of brown on black come up and create like an extra little shadow, stroke a little shadow on there. And you can still even come back and stroke another little highlight if they're just not popping for you. I'm just picking the same side to drop my shadow down on. They're going to be really covered with flowers and leaves so it's just a little bit of dimensionality that you're going for you're just trying to see them a little bit because you're going to be putting so much stuff so much stuff on there so i'm going to be sort of like playful and loose here in the bush and then i'm going to do some detailed of these flowers and so first i'm going to get a little of my quinacridone and my alizarin together and a bit of my white, and you can kind of see that there. Now, and I'm know. going to just being put some of this pink in as little daubs. Can you see the little daubs? Oh yeah, we're getting. We're not that. defining flowers at this stage. We're only going to do some of these as really thought out flowers. We're just making sure that there's a mass of color here. And I love this particular mix-up, the alizarin and the quinacridone with a smidge of white. It um, reminds me of the palette we used to have for unicorns in now, the 80s. Now, Ishmael was saying that these branches are really hard. And is so is it, is it good to practice these a lot? It, it, it is so good to practice branches. Um, there's this sort of muscle memory that you get about branches it also helps if you're practicing them to look at them look at references of them i'm getting more alizarin i'm going to darken as i come up in the the corner here that's a lot of nice pink 
as you can see. What I can show you, maybe I can do it on the back side of this. Okay. I'll do this on the back side. So I gotta let that dry for a second anyways. <laughs> um, just the base branch, let's just look at the black branch, right? We're not trying to double load or anything. You're going to want to press down and then as you stroke out, you want to start moving the brush to the tip and your and your pressure will get lighter and lighter. Now see this little line has meandered a bunch of ways. This little elbow here is an opportunity to talk about how the branches can be, see? And I'll make another little elbow. One of the things to remember about them is they are diminish as they travel out from the tree. So twigs need to be finer than what they're attached to. And it never hurts, you know. You can get even kind of crazy and, and like get like cher cherry blossom crazy where you're like, ooh, I'm so rickety. But those same principles will apply even on those very jointed branches where they're very, very trickety. Does that help? Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> well, that's Ranch really great. and tree clinic. We need to have one. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think that, that it's always good to have a little branch help. It oh. really is because we have a lot in our minds mentally about trees and branches. Mm -hmm. And it's important to realize that those impact our experience. Now I'm going to put in some brighter green. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take a little of my cad yellow over to my phthalo green. I'm loosely mixing, which means I'm not like just swirling around till it's a uniform color. And I'm going to add some of these leaf highlights coming around here. And it's just a dab. See, so leaving lots of space in between. Isn't that fun? Just pulling the little brush stroke. It has a little curve to it. One thing that I'm able to do that you might find challenging is just be relaxed about each leaf. Yeah. You know, where I'm like, it's not each individual leaf that's going to make this painting for me. It is the sum of all of this structure that's going to pull it together. So I'm not going to get caught over a leaf that I don't feel like went down perfectly. Yeah. Right? I'm going to power through my painting and be like, oh, it'll work out in the end. Right? Now I can get even more yellow on here and even a little of the white. Because there are some bright leaf highlights in here. I'll just put those around. My big thing that I'm paying attention to, if you watch, is I'm looking for spots. But I don't make little regimented patterns. And that, how's that looking? Oh, isn't that nice? Oh, yeah. That's super nice. Now, I'm going to add some very thought out little leaves down the branches and some more thought out flowers. I'm going to get my yellow and my green, you know, and I might come to the end of this branch and come around and just give some, I know I'm going to have tons of little flowers coming down this little branch, but peeking out a couple of little leaves is really going to help it. And now because of my placements, I can place my butterflies in front of my leaves if I have to, even if they get too full, and still get my full magic effect. Okay, little leaves. Yeah. I like the leaves. And it really is 
and I'm, I'm with Christine. I love how relaxing it is just to kind of watch you. Sometimes I get I get sort of caught up in the drift <laughs> of just watching you. Yeah. And I get spaced out because I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, the, the way that the leaves, they're not just like you don't have to get so tight about where they're uh -uh. going to go because they just create that just sort of by naturally letting the leaves fall. Yeah, you just fall. want to let them fall down. There are times, like we've got some projects coming up where we're going to kind of lean into the realism and and get, you know, like, you know, we talk about artists getting tightening up, right? Yeah. And we're going to tighten up a little bit because sometimes it's sort of fun to flex those muscles, but also sometimes it's sort of fun to just relax and be like, high lights, low lights, lots of lovely colors. Just make a beautiful mess in your kitchen. So hmm. they're both fun things to do. There's not really a right or wrong. It's different processes. I love this painting. Yeah. Oh, by the way, mm. everyone would like to say they they're they're very liking your your jewelry today. Oh, thank you. They're, I just love matchy matchy. It is very matchy matchy. They were like, <laughs> it's looking very sharp today. Very, oh, very sparkly. Um, I'll take it. I'll take it. I don't know how, how you guys feel after you had a bunch of surgical work done in your face and you're like oh, I'm so awkward <laughs> I'm gonna dry this a little oh. bit because I don't want to pick up the green into my flowers right now oh yeah and I'm gonna be doing some very bright pops of color here to create this sort of like really noticeable cherry blossom so hold on just a second okay, okay. so uh, like she was saying, uh, it's really important to make sure when you're uh, working with acrylics, especially to uh, between layers of paint that you, you the, where you don't want them to mix, that you dry those layers because it's very easy for uh, you to have a little patch of wet paint there. And then when you put your next coat over the top of it, it'll pick up the paint underneath it and they'll mix. Sometimes that's desirable, but sometimes it's not. So right now, she doesn't want the next layer of paint to pick up the the leaves and the backgrounds. So she's making sure that those are nice and dry yeah. uh, so that yeah. these next colors don't uh, blend in a, inappropriately. Inappropriately. Inappropriate blending on the canvas. <laughs> so I'm going to get a little of my lizard on here and my quinacridone. And then I'm going to get a lot of the white on my tip there. Can you see? Oh, yeah. And I'm going to come right here, and I'm going to plant this brush and kind of wiggle and pull a little flower. So loading the brush with my dark color first and the white at the tip lets me, in a very simple way, get a variegated center. Oh, yeah. I'm going to add a little more white. Let's say maybe one of these more thought out little flowers. You can do this with a round brush too. But it's really about having. There we go. See how they're like more thinking out flowers? Yeah. We'll put one right here. You know, and I just like to sort of splay the brush out. And then I can flip over. I can also rotate my canvas. And I'll show you this with a round brush, too. In case you don't. Really does essentially the same thing. See how we're just getting these nice little flowers here? Yeah. All right. So here is just a number four round. Okay. And what I would do is get my quinacridone on here and get my alizarin. And then again, load the edges here with the white. And let's maybe think about uh, somebody down here. I might flip it. So you can see how because the, the darker color is up the heel of the brush, and the lighter colors at the tip. Yeah. It lets me make this little flower. Let me get a little wet on there and now can you show that load one more time there? Let me just let me get a zoom on that. Okay. Um let me rinse this out and reload. Oh, that'd be great. Okay. So whatever brush you're using for this, what you're trying to do is I've got my brush a little bit wet. I'm loading with the alizarin. I'm gonna get some magenta on there, and you can see I have a nice load of dark color. 
And then on the edge, I'm going to load very thickly and loosely and not mix this white. Now I'll come over here to the camera and make sure I got a nice All zoom right, in. I'm going to do another big flower right here. Got it. And I'm just pressing this down. Just giving myself a nice little break. And there you just picked up more white. You didn't need any more. Yeah, I didn't need any darker color. And I'm just going through and making sure I've got a nice little arrangement of flowers. And it's just kind of fun. Just sometimes I have to move my canvas. to be able to get that little detail. And then once I have that out, you know, then I can kind of do the same thing, but like at different angles. So I have these sort of forward facing flowers that are coming at me that are super cheerful. So I'm gonna get my brush wet and load kind of back up with the same similar load, right? Mm -hmm. But now I'm going to just make little, little half flowers and Oh, yeah. This sort of highlight into that space where these are very, very thought out little tree branches, right? So these are like the flowers facing other directions or yeah. bits of flower. And your brain sort of fills that in, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure that I give the feeling of what how I made my reference, which is that it was this very bloom-laden branch above these magical slippers wait is it you have nailed that <laughs> I mean, see. all right there we go see we have some nice stuff happening and uh, you know when we come down later we'll be able to do that again to drop some petals right oh yeah on our our shoe let's give this a um actually we can let this dry for a second because we're going to be doing the the grass and the shoe i'm going to get a bright for my shoe Okay. I'm going to get a small bright. In this case, I'm going to get a number four Cambridge. So if you look at the size of this, it's not too big. I'm going to have some control over it. It's a mix of bristles and synthetic filaments. So it's not going to get mushy on me. And it's a really nice brush to dry brush with. So oh. even though I'm about to get this wet, I'm going to dry it off a lot extra. And I'm going to start coming through and putting in some of the highlights to my slippers i might get some even some zinc you can use some white if you want to i'm going to get a little of the blue um, i'm going to give an art high five to miss jenny chan who just stopped by to say hello hi jenny chan she says like, you're treat you're looking fabulous there she gives lots of stars and thumbs up thank you so much Jenny uh, is one of my friends from Next Up, and she's a really cool origami mm -hmm. channel, and my kids love it, and it's just fantastic if you want to know how to, like, fold anything, do so many cute, adorable projects, and it's the kind of channel where you can, like, let the kids watch it, and they just fold it, and they come in, they're like, look, I made this cute, adorable kitty box. <laughs> yep. So it's a very, very cool thing. And I'm, like, always so proud of her, because she's like, she was just on Rachel Ray. Oh, or that's... Good Morning America. It's like really cool. She gets like the cool stuff. <laughs> so I'm taking my little zinc and I'm just very lightly dry brushing right over my chalk. So I've got a little blue in there. You can do this with the titanium white. And we're going to come back. The reason I like the zinc is that then when I come back with the titanium white, it's going to give me this incredible highlight on my glass. I'm going to come here and I'm going to pull in a little reflection that I'm seeing. And there's one coming down here. I'm just painting these highlight reflections. Mm -hmm. Because when you paint glass, you paint just the light as it hits it. Bringing a nice little dry brush of that 
down here and you can see that it's letting a lot of the background show through, right? Yeah. Let's bring some of this milky glass back this way. And I'm going to come back here. And this is almost like a calligraphy. I swing back S. We're going to come back with some dark highlights and some different stuff. But it's important. Let's bring this highlight around the heel. That's going to be an important one. And I like the blue cast on all of this. We'll bring this down. There is a lot of dark showing through on the heel, and so that's going to help us. Mm -hmm. And it's just really about catching the shadows and reflections, and it's amazing how it'll go from not very much, like already starting to look like a see-through object that, you know, you've got some glass in. Now, interesting little trick is going to be taking a little of this blue and black, right, our dark color. And let's add a couple spots of this dark value. See how we're doing? In our glass. Right here. I'm gonna bring two strokes back, like up here. We don't wanna take out all the background that it's seeing, but there is definitely that dark value like right there. Let's bring one curve of that forward. Up the heel and down. Look at that, already starting to be a thing. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna look at it and see how starting to be like our but slipper. Painting glass is so tricky because you're not actually painting glass at all, are you? No, you're just painting the light. I'm going to get a little of what I know is my grass color. And I'm going to make sure that I put some of that in that. You're, you're like painting the shadows and the highlights and the reflections of all the things around that. See right here at the toe, I'm like squiggling a little bit in, a little bit at the toe underneath. Yeah, just pop a little bit here and there. Makes a huge, huge, huge difference. And you have to remember, like, this image, like, comes in from another image. So doing it means that you've got to absolutely um, recognize what's around your object and mm -hmm. make adjustments. And that'll make a big difference. Now, I'm going to indulge myself because I feel like some of this pink would absolutely get in this heel. Yes, of course. So I'm grabbing some of that. And we're going to make sure that we... And there it is. Bring a little bit of that right there. Maybe a little right there. Something that says the, the slipper is aware of the flowers above it. Put a little more of that blue. So it's make sure that it's showing through. It feels like you're seeing through it. Yeah. Like you would. There we go. Let's see how we're doing. Getting very glassy. Now it's all going to come down to the titanium white. And I'm going to get some just white on here. I'm going to come right at the top of this shoe. Maybe a little bit right there. Yeah. Now, right down this heel. Curve that. Around the outside. The opaqueness of the titanium really, really helps us with this. Now back underneath. See, I'm making these brush strokes sort of like random. Helps. Yeah. Make a nice reflection right there.
I'm going to just pop this little, I'm doing this really bright highlight. Mm -hmm. Like it's like, that's like another it, pop level of reflection. And that's really interesting how you just, you, you, you put the highlight on that curvature, which just sort of, that's what made it look, that's what makes the glass look round. Right. Is that highlight you just put on there is that way. You... So interesting glasses. I love watching glass get painted because. Okay. See, now we got some glass slippers happening up in our, up in our mug. Here's our back of the heel. I'm going to just, there we go. All right. So much more, and I'm going to lose the glass, and I'm going to be painting like a multicolored shoe. But right now, we have a glass slipper in the tall grass that's happening. And while I've got this here, I'm going to kind of like put some little grass and elements around it. So I might even get a little of my ochre in my green. And just... Put this first muted, softest little area here. This is just a very subtle deal. And I'm looking and I'm like, oh, if I take out my chalk, I lose my heel. So I'm going to come back with my titanium white. Make sure I've got it. Because I don't want to lose it. Hard to get in, right? Yeah. So we don't want to lose our heel. Yeah, I, I'm with. Uh, uh, this is like so three dimensional. <laughs> is it? Is it happening for yes. everybody? All right. So I'm loading up my yellow, my cad yellow, and my thalo green, and we're gonna just come right here with this bright, bright color. I'm going to. Can you see? I'm just flicking this, and it's this loose little edge uneven loose little edge it's just there we go right here there we go just a little bit Let's go right there isn't that fun how you just make that little bit of now I think I'm going to get into my cat's tongue number eight again, right after sipping my coffee and see how we're done. I'm going to look at my painting. Oh, yeah. And go, look at us. We got a glass slipper with a bunch of cherry blossoms, and we're about to have glow flies. And it's looking really good. Everyone is really loving how this is just, you know, this is so, it covers so many good fantasy topics, glass and reflectivity and highlights and those flowers. Oh, the one-stroke flowers. That's like... Now, when we get down to the bottom, are you gonna are you gonna you're gonna do a couple different sized flowers? Yeah, on the bottom, we're gonna have a couple different sizes sizes of flowers. We're gonna have some values of grass, and then we're gonna have some little magic lights coming up and some glowing butterflies. Yeah, that was something they wanted to make sure that we saw a couple different different sizes of yes. flowers was something that could be useful. So yeah, of course, yes, totally. Okay, yeah, this is good. <laughs> so I'm gonna come here, and here's an interesting, crazy thing I can do. I can take my um, cad yellow oh, put that back and up. my quinacridone. See this? Mm -hmm. And I can get into my green and get this amazing color. And it's a little different. I'm going to put this here. And I'm just taking the edge of my brush and I'm pulling up little grassy strokes. See? I'm on this edge corner. I'm just going to pull these up. So it is the yellow and the quinacridone to a bright orange, and you pull it into the green, and it's like amazing for what it can do for your grass. So it goes beyond just, you know, having the cad yellow in your grass. It gives it such a nice dimensionality. And also will create this sense of that this is focal, which we want. So I'm just like, look, these little soft brush strokes of grass, 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 grass. It does help to go grass, 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 grass. Just flowing around. And then when we have that really good, we can come back in and get our, our burnt umber. 
our green grass and fill in these dark outer corners, right? Whoops, sorry. Oh, happens. Your ears okay? Yeah. Everybody's ears okay? I think I think we had a little crinkle, but it, I think it's okay. Let's see how we're doing. We're just getting that dark green. Now we have that focus of the grass right there. I can even get like some of the pure thalo and pull it in there now. Look at that. Mm -hmm. And it just becomes this sort of out of focus front area where we have, we know we've dropped something, somebody's been running and you know, it's been discarded. She's probably feeling quite stressed about it. <laughs> hmm. But we know, because we know the whole story, that she's going to be fine in the end. There's a... There's you know, unless you're, unless you're watching uh, Storybrooke, <laughs> and then maybe not as good as it could be. I'm going to get a little of my white into my yellow-green, that bright, bright color. And I'm going to add just a few... Mm -hmm. of these blades not everywhere see just very lightly very lightly and it just creates a little little drama little drama in our but some nice layers some nice dimensionality Now, I'm going to get my just magenta and some white. And I'm going to put a little flower right here. And this little petal will come close to us. I'll have to highlight that in a second. And then we're going to do another little flower right here. <laughs> and I may bring some grass over this one when I'm all done with it. All right. And then we're going to do our much bigger flower. Right here. Sorry, I had some sneezes. Well, I understand that. Now I'm just pulling in my my little leaf shapes. We're going to let that dry for a minute so we can come back and add some details to that. I do think that I definitely want a couple grass petals over that one. So I'm going to get a little of my white back on my brush. And just tip a couple of these petals more white. And I'm going to definitely, definitely get this one right here on the edge more white. Just painting them up close. Now I'm going to get my alizarin and my quinacridone. Put that down in there. Just play with my little flower. I've got to dry this one so I can brighten up its colors. And then I'm going to layer some grass petals around these. Okay. Oh. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Oh, and one of the things I forgot to tell you guys earlier. Uh, if you go out to, our, to the website on theartshipper.com, and the link is in the description below that we've got down there, you can find a link to this to, to this project along with all of the other projects in this series, all of the other the fantasy works that are there, and, and all of the other things that we've done, all of the projects up there. We've got a whole list of them, whole playlists of projects you can do. What? So, 
I was just saying that uh, up on the website, we have the collection of the other projects in the series that you can do. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I forgot to mention that earlier. So. Well, we've got a lot of fairy tale themed. I'm just doing quinacridone and white. Making sure I'm liking the shape of my flower and the delicacy of the petals. Um, and I've just, I mean, like we've got, there's an Aladdin one coming up I'm so excited about. So just trying to find those fun projects that I'm just edging these with a little bit of value so that they seem a little more like they're distant friends. There we go. And then we're going to put some more little blades in front of that so it feels a little layered like it should. Get some of my orange. My green. There we go. Look. Just a little bit over the friends. Isn't that nice? Making some little different directionality. Oh, I love it. All right. I like it too. So now we've got some flowers. We've got our slipper, but we've got to get these beautiful, glowing, luminous butterflies up in the sky. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put them in with white first, and then I'm going to build up the layers and glow all around them. So I'm going to get my cleanest water that I have, and I'm going to load up my brush with some white. And I'm going to definitely put one up here. I might to just, you know, make sure I've got a handle on it, draw him in. So oh, I'm yeah. feeling really good about it. You know, where the wing comes up high. And I'm going to be like, you know, where I'm happy with like the wing shape. And I'm going to do my three stroke methodology, I think. Which I really like. So for him, I might go bigger. For him, I might go bigger. So I'm going to go one, two, three. This is my number eight cat's tongue. It's just a nice size to build him from. And then two strokes for his little butterfly bum bum. And that way, if I want to Pull the wing up higher, I can do that. So I'm going to let that sit there. I get some of my other butterflies. So I can go nice little body here. Go one, two, three. One, two, three. Two little strokes for the back wing. Just a little bit. Having fun with our little dudes. Put a little one down here. One, two, three. And you can kind of see I'm pulling those in a little more. So he's kind of like coming from that direction. Put some more over here. One, two, three. Pull that back because I want those a little bit rounded. I feel like we need one more, and I got a little crazy with my branches. That's right. Crazy branches can happen. I got a little crazy. I, I like the crazy branches. It just says lots of flowers. Well, it does. And and there is in a fairy tale, isn't there? Yes. Getting my it would little be butterflies abundant. in. I mean, like, if you were a fairy... And you could make flowers. Would you make just one? No. No. I mean, like, I know this. I, I mean, like, and I'm, I, I, because I would not just make one. I would be, like, making all the flowers. <laughs> You're like, all the flowers are the best. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get um, a little tiny brush. I'm going to pick one. And I am going to get my yellow over to my zinc. You could use your white. Just want some nice transparent. 
just my uh, cad yellow. You can even, you know, if you want to make it like warmer with the quinacridone, you can do that. And I'm going to make little magic marks with these little. This is like little little circles that just sort of come out. The zinc being transparent means I don't have to work that hard. You put even one like kind of like it's coming from the shoe. These are sort of fun to do. You guys see them as they're coming on the canvas? Oh yeah. They just sort of appear. It's just little, just a little dry brush circle is all it takes to make these sort of little magical little spots. And you know, you can again do this with the titanium white in just one step. I gotta let my butterflies dry anyway, so I'm like, eh, I got time for the two step. But wherever the butterflies are, you definitely want to be like, oh, that's like, that's where some magic is happening, right? Pulling a little magic out of the little butterfly bum bums. <laughs> butterflies have bum bums. I don't know if anyone knew that. That's a true fact. You know, you can do any kind of butterfly. You can do them glowing like we're going to do them. Or you just keep coming back here. We're just making the little bits of little magic-y circles. So these are just really light, aren't they? And mm -hmm. the zinc or the mixing white will help with that. Now, if you don't have it, just do a very dry, dry brush with your white. I'm going to use the two values to create some real magical depths. 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 But first, I'm going to dry my butterfly. Okay. So I can glow around them, and then I'm going to put them in all neat and tidy, and then they're going to be all yellowy glowy. Now, that's the important thing to remember is uh, making sure you, you get those layers dry between it, especially the yellows and whites, anything that's going to be a light color, um, and you're going to do any layering on top of it, make sure you dry those off. Now, I think someone was asking earlier, do we use a special hair dryer? Um, not particularly, other than we uh, send and make sure that she buys one that has a cool or blow-only setting so that you can have no heat. And... Um, because the heat doesn't actually do a lot to uh, help dry the painting. It does help, you know, remove some moisture from the air. So there's some of that. But for the most part, it's the air moving over it that uh, oh. helps dry the canvas. Dry, dry the, the canvas. Painting. How are you liking our little glass slippers so far? Really, really good. They love this painting, man. We've had the incredible turnout here. Oh, they're really loving it. And a lot of new people who've really enjoyed uh painting live here with us so thank you guys by the way for joining us i've really enjoyed having you all out here with us i'm taking a little of my yellow which had just a smidge of the quinacridone in it and pulling it out i'm going to get some glaze you can also get a little zinc um zinc or mixing white lightens m in a much more subtle and transparent way from titanium white and it will let us do things like, I'm going to make sure this is dry so you see I don't have too much pigment. And I'm going to just kind of scumble a little glow here. And if it gets too powerful, I'm going to come back with, there we go. That's about the level of glow I'm wanting. You can see I'm going right over the leaves. I mean, not leaves, the wings with this, which is okay because I'm coming back. We're going to just make sure that we've got a little glow off of this guy. So here's my glaze. There's a little zinc in it. And what these two things do is this lets me have a transparent kind of little glaze that I can just. Those layers just make it look so cool. And, and, I, and Can you see how like how little pigment is coming off? Like you can see how dry these yeah. bristles are with pigment. 
and the sort of like circular dusting motion that I'm using to offload these. I know that you're 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 in that bright bright studio, so it's hard to see the subtlety on the monitor there, but you can totally see it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just like letting these guys go, making sure that they've got a glow. We definitely want a glow on them, and that's super nice, right? That little subtle glow. Could even be back here on the shoe a bit, right? So when we're sure we're happy with that, we're going to take our yellow pigment, right, which is the cad yellow with a smidge of the quinacridone. I'm going to come over to my white, my titanium white. And now I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to come inside and make this much more opaque, Deanna's little design. Like, See how we're doing? Uh-huh. Yeah, Deanna's with me. She's like totally doubling down on the uh, on on the uh, butterfly glow. That's like <laughs> awesome sauce. <laughs> well, we all like a glowy butterfly. Hmm. So we're just making sure that these guys have a nice shape. Yeah. And what's nice about this is, is that, you know, once you've got that in, you can keep them. Let's see how we're doing. Yeah, see how he's starting to, like, be a lit? Yeah. He's a lit. A lit little fly. Get over there on that. So that is how, how it's sort of interesting how the zinc and titanium white and a little bit of tinting can really, really... define some of the shapes that you're trying to I forgot to glow my little dude I glow him in a minute <laughs> you get glowed in a second little dude <laughs> unglowed butterfly so we're just brightening those up and letting that glow start to come off of them I'm going to just really, really, really make sure that this is dry. I'm going to get my glaze with a little bit of my yellow. And I'm just going to make sure my little buddy here has his glow on. He should. I would want him to be glowless. And we're going to go back to our number three over zero brush. Yeah. And I'm going to get, again, this sort of yellow with just a hint of quinacridone, right? And I'm going to load up with my titanium white. And so some of these will now be a little bit brighter. Maybe different ones. Can you guys see it? Yeah. How's that looking with the layering? Let's see. Oh, I like the layering. Oh, okay. yeah, me too. Totally loving the layer. Layer, 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 layer. Have some fun. Layer, layer, layer. Just a little bit of fun. We are getting really close on this one. Yeah, well, as soon as these are done, we're done. Really? Yeah, I was going to say, this is like... This was this turned out to be really fast. Did it? Yeah, it was like we're just just over an hour. I am surprised at that. Yeah, I was not oh. sure where we were gonna be. Let me give some of these guys little antennas, because I like my butterflies to have <laughs> antennas. I'm trying to chase you around. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just right. like antennas. <laughs> <laughs> you're just you're antennaing them up all over the place, and I'm like, ah, oh, I can't chase you. <laughs> and, you know, just a little brush stroke that says, "Hey, I have a little antenna because I'm a magic fly." Let's give him some. Have fun. Mm -hmm. 
Ooh, Amanda was was saying, you know, do you think that uh, you could use interference paint to enhance some of the glow effects? Yes. Well, I was just thinking that would Actually, so especially over this dark background, and I thought about it, and I was like, oh my gosh, that'd be making everyone go get a paint. Now, if but I can. Yes, totally. If I can make a request here. Uh-huh. We have had so many great ideas and comments in chat from everybody about this and, and their ideas. I would love to see all your, all your paintings posted up on the Facebook page so we can see those up on our website. Love to see those images. Please, please, please share those up and let us know where they're at. Um, because I'm looking forward to seeing all the variations. We've had ideas for mices and more glitter and iridescent paint. Oh, my gosh. There's been so many good ideas. Oh, yeah, and especially your interference and your pearlescence will pop over dark colors. So using them around the butterfly will absolutely give you that perfect result you're going for. I'm going to get my bright color here. I'm going to come under my grass. And sign it Sherpa. We did it. That's pretty I hope, awesome. I hope this is just a fun kind of like, what are we doing today project? Tomorrow is going to be another one. Uh, tomorrow's project is going to be sponge heavy, so get your kitchen sponges, get your sea sponges, hit the dollar store. These are really fun techniques, and they're totally worth doing, so I hope you guys will come and let me show you how to make this fantastic castle scene that I've got tomorrow. Um, you good, John? I'm so good. Thank you guys for coming and joining us. we had a wonderful crowd. Love hanging out with you guys. Thank you for being with us. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.